little computer controls class. Uh, right now I'm doing the only thing old Andy Bashir is letting us do, and that's drive around in our cars. Um, this is what I've been doing the past week or so for fun to get out of the house to escape a crazy four-year-old. He thought I was going to say wife, but um, he's actually quite pleasant. So is the four-year-old most of the time. Um, but yeah, here we are cruising around in the truck through the neighborhood. And I'd just like to start this video off by saying that none of us chose this. None of us, none of us chose the online life. The online life chose us this time. Um, so please just bear with me. Um, I'm, Blackboard is not my greatest skill, as you've already noticed over the past couple weeks. Um, but by the end of this, I would say we're all going to be Blackboard experts. Um, and I hope to make a, a few more, um, more personal videos just to keep the connection between us. Because um, anybody can YouTube a bunch of uh, how to fix it videos. Um, so, basically, today I just want to show you guys the... Um, thermal imaging camera uh, that we just got from Snap-on and kind of how it can help you diagnose stuff very quickly um, and you know when you diagnose stuff quick you can tend to make you tend to make a little bit more money because you can do the job faster um, and you guys most of you guys know that being a technician um, you get paid by the job not by the hour so the quicker you can do something more money you could potentially make. Um, so let's check it out, the thermal imaging camera by Snap-on. We just got two of these in and hopefully one day you'll get to see this thing in the flesh. So basically if you think about anything on a car, either is supposed to create heat or not supposed to create heat so if you can see the heat then you'll be much it'll be much easier to diagnose um, say for instance imagine you're having a, a brake caliper drag one that's dragging one that's not releasing um, that corner of the brakes is going to be is going to show a potter so I haven't driven this car very far but It'll show you, you see the top left corner up there, it'll show you how the exact temperature of what that little crosshair um, is pointing at. So literally I've driven this thing 10 feet and the front brakes are at 84 degrees. Um, so if, and basically you you come around to the other side and these are at 68 degrees. So I guess the sun's kind of shining on that side I may have something wrong with that caliper. I may want to look into it. Um, typically, which I'll, I'll I'll drive one of these cars and record this part again. But um, typically, you're going to see 250, 220 degrees Fahrenheit in a good kind of warm break. Um, but you're, what you're going to want to look for is uniformity around all four corners. So you really don't have to know what a known good one looks like because you hopefully you have three other that are going to be known good um, another one of my favorites about this camera is just you know little dumb stuff like this car has this is my wife's car uh, this car has heated seats it also has 200,000 miles on it so the heated seats have been have worked better I'm sure so, if we turn the heated seats on, um, and we see that left side of the screen is showing you what you're actually looking at, and then the right side is showing you a thermal imaging, uh, obviously a thermal imaging image. And so, the, the brighter yellow it is, the hotter it is. It appears to have kind of hard with the sun beating down on it but so you're the seats about 100 100 degrees Fahrenheit 
I would say that part of it's working pretty good. May have some lower, some some weak spots in it. You can see there, 96. Back here, it's 105. In the back here, 105, 107. Kind of scary hot spot right there at 130. Now I've seen these um, catch on fire, especially uh, in Mercedes. I was pulling one in. Um, I was pulling a G class in one day, and the they, the customer complaint was seat heater gets too hot. And by the time I got it into the shop, um, it had burned about a quarter size hole in the uh, seat. Almost burned my butt. Didn't though. So on, we check this side. And you'll see on this side, there appears to be a, a hot spot, pretty hot spot right there. 100, and then you'll over here, it's about 115. That's not bad. The whole bottom of the seat appears to be around 100. So for the age, mileage, and, and what this car is worth, um, I wouldn't do anything about that this hot spot over here I would just keep an eye on it and hope it doesn't burn the car down maybe not maybe quit using it because um, in these cars the seat mats um, the elect the electrical like heating part of the seat is built into the, le the leather covers and they're just insanely expensive this car only cost me 2800 bucks um, two or three years ago and it's been uh, totaled since then and I got paid about four thousand dollars for it so it doesn't owe me any money so I'm not gonna spend too much money on it. Um, so right now we're gonna take a look at the alternator and I'm gonna I'm gonna dig up some uh, known good pictures and known bad pictures of an alternator so when the alternator is charging it's gonna glow nice and yellow and, and white hot like that because when it's charging, it's creating heat, right? So when it, when one is when the alternator is not charging, it's not going to be white hot, yellow hot like that. We can also check the accessory pulleys. That one's got a little glow to it, but I would say that's pretty normal. I would say a, if a bearing's fully worn out, it's going to have a, a nice, pretty good glow to it. This one back here, um, so what you're seeing glowing through there is the exhaust manifolds. And if you have a cool spot in one of those, chances are you have a misfire. That one looks pretty even all the way across. Kind of hard to see on this side because the air box is in the way, but that one looks nice and even. But, so, Back to computer controls class, right? So, um, in computer controls, you're going to get what's called a parasitic draw. Parasitic draw is something that is killing your battery over time. Um, and it could be, I've seen door control modules do it. Um, sorry, terrible camera angle. I've seen body control modules do it. Um, basically, lots of stuff can cause a draw that typically the most uh, annoying part of it is an overnight where it can kill your battery overnight no matter what you do um, now the coolest thing about this is I'm gonna shut the car off for a second because it's kind of noisy but you can check for a parasitic draw or sometimes it's called parasitic load um, with this camera right here because remember what I said earlier um, Basically everything on a car is supposed to create heat or not supposed to create heat. So imagine, um, and when a, a component is stuck on, the relay is gonna be working. And when the relay's been running for an hour and the car hasn't, um, it's going to, what, be hot, right? So now if there is the fuse box, regular picture on the left, 
and there are three big relays that are 130 degrees, 114, 115. So now imagine that you've come out. Um, that so this car this car came into the shop with a parasitic draw, parasitic load. Customer complaint is that the battery is going dead overnight, and so you'd pull it into the shop, turn the key on, cycle everything, you know, kind of wake everything up. Pull it into the shop. Uh, no, so you, sorry, you've pulled it into the shop, cycle everything, uh, kind of wake everything up, park it, lock it, and let it sit for uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and come back and see and check fuse boxes, control modules with this camera. And if you see anything glowing like that, that's for sure, it's not a 100% diagnosis, but it's for sure going to be a great place to start. Now, these are just um, hot because obviously the car's been running for a few minutes and those uh, relays have been actually in use. All right, so we put a few miles on the uh, 97 Chevy GMC C1500 and we're gonna look at a few things on it with the thermal imaging camera. You might, you're gonna notice the AC compressor cycling on and off and if you were in my AC, uh, in my HVAC repair class, you know what's wrong with it. We diagnosed it in that class. Um, I just haven't gotten around to fixing it. With the weather changing and me having not a whole lot to do, um, I bet I'm going to fix it here pretty soon. But let's check out some stuff on this. So, there's the exhaust manifold. This is a V8, but the cylinders are grouped together, so you really just see the three, the three ports, and I can just sneak a peek at that one. 480, 480, and uh, four. Oh, yep, and 450 or so. I would say that's pretty close, but I'm and the truck runs pretty good, um, so I don't I don't see a I don't see an issue with that. But I don't know. Could do a little digging on that. I'd say it's fine. Now, obviously, what this is is helping you to see here. Um, so that one's we got 480 on that one, about 500 on that one. 380 on that front one there. Oh, no. 430 on that front one. So what that's going to tell us is um, basically if you have a cylinder that's misfiring, it's not going to produce the same amount of heat as the cylinder next to it um, or another cylinder. So what you're going to want to see is all the cylinders. There's no spec for that um, that you're going to be able to look up, but you want to see all the cylinders about the same in the same range. Now, I haven't put too many miles on this in that drive, but we're going to, if we take a look at the, the tires, so what you're going to want to see here is about the same temperature all the way across. If you see a hot, if you see like the inside of the tire is hot, you may have a camber issue. Um, if you see kind of the inside of the outside of the tire, gradually getting hotter uh, through the middle here could have a tow issue um, obviously this is not an alignment machine but it could just give you a, a quick peek into what may be going on with the alignment just with this tool right here obviously this is going to be a lot quicker than throwing it up on the alignment rack but you're not going to be able to do any obviously any real measurements with this tool just showing you where the friction is created, where more friction is being created. More friction, more heat. Um, just for fun, we'll take a look at the, the tailpipe there, 161 degrees. Now, if I could get under this car, we could check the cat, the catalytic converter with it. Um, and if it was blocked, you'd see a big dead spot in it and you'd see it'd be a lot cooler on one end than the other 
unfortunately can't really well um, I'll I guess I'll admit it that I've cut the cat off this truck and that was purely because it was clogged and I didn't have a chance to I haven't had a chance to replace it yet um, the next one will have more computer control stuff in it I brought one of the the all tells home um, it's a generic scanner you can buy affordable versions of it um, for 100 bucks or so and or you can go all the way up I think ours is like four thousand um, dollars I don't see why anybody would need that for their house but um, we're gonna get to go through some scan tool usage and like uh, bi-directional controls and just um, kind of the basics of scan tool usage with the Autel in my driveway. How fun, right? Uh, see you guys soon.